Hey friends, how are you? Hope you're well. You've had a good week. Mine has been very, very, very slow. Um, I took I took unwell last Saturday, well, early Sunday morning. Uh, stomach, sore stomach, and sickness, and everything else. So it was, I was, you know, not great. Uh, thankfully, Dad remembered I had these anti sickness tablets, so managed to get take one. Um, and it sort of settled things down a bit, um, but it's just left me feeling so tired. It's like I have no energy. Excuse me. You know, I don't have a lot of energy anyway, but I've got even less at the moment. Um, so I've had a very, very quiet week. I haven't, I've, you know, I've just been on the sofa or, you know, in the chair, snuggled up reading. and. What's very interesting is that when I'm ill or when I'm not feeling well, I will automatically reach for the Shally School, and that's what I've done again this week. Um, I've read two two fill-ins this week. So I read A Difficult Term at the Shally School by Lisa Townsend. Now, this is set before, for all you people who know about the Shally School, this is set in or just at the end of the Second World War. So the school are still at Plas Howell, which is on the well, the English Wales border. And they get this <clears throat> new pupil called Annis. And she is not happy. Her father has been has been reported missing and presumed dead. Um he was on a convoy over around the the Cape of Good Hope. And the ship went down and they don't think anybody survived and she's been looked after by his by her, her, her cousin um her mother had died and so she's been look, looking after looked after by her as her cousin and this woman is horrible this woman is an absolute oh she's really not a nice lady so she's Annis has been staying with friend with other friends and but the the aunt doesn't like them, so she pulls her out of there, and sends her to the Shirley School. And you know, uh, various things happen that you know put Anna's just is like so unhappy, and she tries to settle down. And there are a lot of teething problems, and so it's a really good feeling, very well written. Really enjoyed the characterization in it, and. You know, seeing Anna sort of try her hardest at times to settle down. Other times it's like, why am I bothering? Um, you know, so yeah, really, really enjoyed that. And then I decided I wanted to read the the actual Shally School that was the sequel to it. And that was the Shally School in the island. So the island of now, the Shally School has now moved to St. Breville's Island off the Welsh coast. Um, Annis is still in trouble um, for various things and eventually takes things into her own into her own hands and she has a major scare and adventure and you know it was really I, I was glad that I'd read the two like back to back so that I had excuse me so I had kind of the whole story in my head so it was really good I mean this is this is this is a really nice book as well it's a, it's a good it's a good read and then I thought my final one that I took was another fill-in and that's Juniors of the Shally School by Catherine Bruce this is set during the time of the Shally School and the princess or princess at the Shally School and it's all to do with the new matron who is all oh, really not nice um and it's like how the juniors feel about it, etc. Hold on, that's her telephone. Her bell just got. Sorry about that. But anyway, yes, as I say, it's about the, the the horrible matron and the juniors, but also the juniors in this term, um, they're having their own special prefect because there's work going on in the main chalet, and some of the middles, middle school are sleeping over at the junior chalet, and they're having their own like special prefect. And they, the juniors think it's going to be one person, one certain girl who they really, really like. It ends up being another who they're not that keen on. And she, 
the girl they cho that they choose to um, become the special prefect, she wants to prove to the head and the deputy head that she's really, you know, that she's that she's up to the task, etc. And she maybe takes it just slightly too too far. Um, but no, it was really nice, and it was nice to sort of get this side, the sort of the story of the matron. It was really nice to get it from the junior side as perspective as well. Because in Princess you get it from the middles and the seniors. So yes, it was really nice to, to get it from this one. But I you know I love the, the fillings. The fillings are just so good because you know they they write they're written in the in sort of the way that Eleanor and Brent Diary would write them and I just it's just really, really good. Really enjoy it. So I then picked up as another nod to Middle Grade, no, to March Mystery Madness, I picked up From the Shadows by B.J. Daniels. This is the second book of the Buckhorn Montana series. And this was really good. This again, it was like, when I got into it, it was like, I just kept wanting to read more. So we meet Casey Crenshaw, who has come back to Buckhorn Montana to sell her grandmother's hotel. Um, and hopefully just get it raised to the ground. Um, a murder happened on the last summer that Casey was helping grandmother out at the hotel and they don't know who did it and the, then the night she arrives she finds that there's this man here, man there and he's like well I, invite, I was invited for the weekend and she's like pardon I didn't send any invites out and then these other people arrive and they've all been sent invites to the hotel for that weekend and it's on the invite it says if you don't arrive we know that you murdered Megan so they've got so these these people who were there they were working the, that last so that's last summer when Megan was murdered and one of them is the murderer but Casey knows it's not her and the guy that she finds there, Finn, he was a friend of Megan's. He was actually her boyfriend from where, you know, from where Megan was living, but her parents sent her away. So you've got that, you've got the, that background story going on. And then you've got various bits and pieces in, interwoven into it. And you're like, wait a minute, what's, who's doing this or what's happening? It was really good. It was like, you know, it, it was a very much a, I want to know what's happening. I want to keep the pages turning. So I really, really enjoyed it. Um, I did work out one of the things that happened. I worked out who was doing it. Um, but I didn't work out the other part. So it was, you know, it was really good. Really, really enjoyed it. And as I say, this is only book book two. I'm going to definitely get the re some more of these because they are really well written. And if, if they're all sort of like, shall we say, mysteries or things like that, it's going to be a really good series to read. And then I finally picked up, I'd finished Buck, the Buckhorn Montana one um, on Wednesday night. So yesterday I picked up Hope at Christmas by Nancy Nagel. Um, I'm on chapter 8 on this, or I'm about to start chapter 8. I'm really enjoying this and... I've got this to read. I'm sure I will get this finished this weekend. I am taking part in Sarah the Bookish Knitter has a Create Your Own Readathon this weekend. Um, and I'm going to take part. And the, the prompt for it was green on the cover for St. Patrick's Day. Green. So, yes, there's green on the cover. And I mean, I know it's not exactly a St. Patrick's Day type book, but I'm going to go with it. <laughs> so yes, yeah, so I'm hoping to get this read this weekend, um, and if I do, if I finish it, I'll choose. I don't know. I'll choose after that. I really don't know. I haven't decided. But um, so that's kind of what I've been what I've been reading this weekend. It's a easy, easy, easy reads because it just oh, I don't have the the energy or the 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 brain power and capacity at the moment to to read anything that's highly highly thought it you've got to highly highly think about it and follow multiple characters no i just can't do that um just not not what i i can do at the moment um what else am i going to be doing this weekend 
Um, I am going to be watching the final weekend of the Six Nations Rugby. So Scotland play Italy. Hope we win because if we win, I think we will finish third in the championship, which is really good. Um, and it'll just be another another really gentle, gentle, gentle weekend. I had hoped to see my other half. He came back yesterday, but he hasn't been well, um, poor thing, and has ended up having to go to the doctor and has got some stuff that, that'll help help him get better. But you know, poor, poor soul is not feeling very well. He's like, I'm, go I'm going to stay away from you, with a, you know, until I'm feeling better. So I probably won't get to see him this time either, which is a shame. Um, yeah, I it means I won't have seen him kind of in the flesh for... I would have seen him for about three three weeks or so, if not more. So I'd be like, but hey, I want him to get better. I want him to feel better because he's been feeling miserable, poor thing. So yeah, so that's been that. Um, but no, apart from that, very very quiet weekend this weekend coming. So please let me know down in the comments what have you been reading this weekend. Uh, this week I would love to know also actually, yeah, what are you going to be reading this weekend and what are your weekend plans? Um. Sorry, sorry, I thought I was going to yawn there. But I would really love to know. Sorry, this is such a short video, friends, but it's like, yeah, never mind. But I will be, I will hopefully, you know, I am feeling better. Um, I just need to just build things back up again. But no, I'm going to be okay. So that's, that's good. But until my next video, friends, stay safe, happy reading, and happy St. Patrick's Day. Bye.